Hi guys. Um, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, I thought today we could do something a little bit different than we usually uh, do. I am going to start with a story, and the story is called 10 Thank You Letters. And the name on the book is Daniel Kirk, and that's the only name. So we know that that means Daniel K Kirk is the author as well as the illustrator of this book. And it's cute. It's uh, So it's called 10 Thank You Letters, and there's a little couple little people there that, well, I guess they're not people. One's a bunny, one's a piglet. So let's see what happens in this book. This is a weird thing you see on some books, and you can use it as a bookmark. If you only read part way, then you can bend it over the pages to keep your page there. Oh. Thank, 10 thank you letters. And there's a little pig sitting there writing a letter. So here he is, and in the background he hears ring, ring, ring. I thought it was a phone, but it's not a phone. It's his doorbell. Hello, rabbit. Hello, pig. Want to play? He's got his baseball there. Sure, but first I'm writing a thank you letter to my grandma. She got me this sweater for my birthday. Nice. Hey, I want to thank my grandma too. Hmm. Can I borrow a piece of paper, pig, and a pencil? Sure, rabbit. So it shows us the card or the note that Rabbit wrote to his grandma. And it says, Dear Grandma, thank you for the marshmallow cake you always make bake for my birthday. Love, Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Aren't grandmas the best? My kid's grandma makes them their birthday cakes, too. My son likes my mom's brownies. So she makes chocolate brownies for him on his birthday. And my daughter likes my mom's Oreo cheesecake. So that's what my mom makes her for her birthday. Okay, pig, I'm done with my letter. How about you? Pig says, not yet, rabbit. I'm telling my grandmother about the weather. But it's a thank you letter. Why are you telling her about the letter? I don't know, rabbit. It's just the way I do it. Whoa, I just thought of someone who deserves a big thank you. Can I borrow another piece of paper, pig? And an envelope and a stamp, too? Oh, look at this letter. This is fancy. Dear Madame President, thanks for doing a ducky job. Let me know if you need some help. Love rabbit. And then there, there is their president, a duck, a lady who's a duck. Now in Canada, we have prime ministers, but I can see the American flag there. So they, this must be in the United States. Done. Are you finished with your letter yet, pig? Well, no, I thought I'd tell grandma about how I'm helping mom with the chores. Chores? Why are you telling her that? It's a thank you letter. Because grandma likes it when I help my mom and she might want to know how things are going around here. Hey, I just thought of another great person to thank. Can I, can I borrow more paper? And there. Dear Mr. Lapin, in case you were wondering how things are going around here, they are great. Your funny books make my whole class laugh. Love, Rabbit. So he's writing to an author or an illustrator there. Are you done with your letter yet, Pig? No, Rabbit. I just want to tell Grandma that I laughed so much yesterday that my loose tooth came out. 
Ooh. I've never laughed that hard. Can I have another sheet of paper, pig, please, pig? Let me guess. You thought of someone else to thank. I sure did. Dear Miss Pachyderm, thanks for teaching us about brushing our teeth. Now I have clean teeth and fresh breath. Love, Rabbit. And there he wrote to his teacher. Thank you. Or page. No. Nice. This one's done too. How's your letter going, pig? Well, I haven't seen my grandma in a while, so there's a lot to tell her, but you keep interrupting. Sorry, pig. Maybe if you just give me a stack of paper and envelopes and more stamps, I won't have to bother you. Oh, he doesn't look happy right now, does he? Dear Mr. Moose, you are the best librarian. Thanks for finding me so many sports books. Love, Rabbit. Oh, so that must be a librarian. Here's a school bus. Dear Miss Otter, thanks for being a great school bus driver and never getting lost on the way to school. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mrs. Chicken, thanks for being a great crossing guard and making sure everyone gets to the other side. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mr. Hog, thanks for always giving me a carrot. A carrot pop at your market. Love, Rabbit. Dear Mr. Kid, thanks for delivering all our mail. It's a lot to carry, isn't it? There, I'm finished. See you later, pig. I am off to the mailbox to send my letters. Finally, I can finish my letter, thought pig. Yay, done. But Rabbit used all my envelopes and all of the stamps. Oh no, how will I mail my letter to Grandma now? <gasps> Look at him. He looks very angry now. Looks like he's taking a little, a little fit there, a little foggy dance. He's very angry. Ring, ring. <gasps> he hears that again. Goes to the door and there's Rabbit. Hello, Pig, guess what? I got more envelopes and stamps for you. And I wrote one more thank you letter. I thought I'd deliver it myself. Ah, Pig looks much happier now. Thanks, Rabbit. No one ever wrote me a thank you letter before. Shall we read the letter Rabbit wrote to Pig? It says, Dear Pig, thank you for inspiring me and for being generous and for being my friend. Love, Rabbit. Net P.S. Now are you ready to play catch? So that was so nice of him. Yay, game time. Yes, after a quick stop at the mailbox. I guess they're gonna mail all those letters. Oh, and there's Grandma Pig getting the letter. I'm gonna read it. It says, Dear Grandma, thanks for sending the great birthday sweater. Did you know my favorite color is purple? The weather has been cool, so I can wear the sweater every day, even when I'm helping mom wash dishes or sweep the floor. Yesterday, my best friend Rabbit and I were laughing at a funny book, and my loose tooth fell out. Oh, well, I will grow another one. Anyway, thanks again for the sweater, and I hope you are well. Love, Pig. And I just noticed Grandma's also wearing a purple sweater, so she can match. They're ever together in those sweaters. So I thought that this would be a good book to read because we all have time now to mail letters, don't we? And sometimes we forget to thank people for stuff, not just for gifts they might send, but just for being them. So I have some stamps here. These are Canadian stamps. 
I have this kind and I have uh, this one and I had some other ones here too. So uh, I just mail letters to each of my students at my one school because I thought they might be getting bored. I'd send them some letters, so I did. I've always liked to send letters. My mom taught me how when I was very young and, and how to address an envelope. So if you're sending an envelope, uh, the sender's information, my name and address goes here. And then here I would put uh, the name and address of the person I'm sending it to. So I thought we could do a fun letter today. I'm going to, you can use anything. I'm going to use this paper. I'm going to use purple, thinking of their purple sweaters. And what should I write? Who should I write a letter to? Hmm. 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 I don't know. I can write to my son. He lives in Toronto. Or, you know what? Since we've been off school, my cousins and I have been having a phone call one night a week on Friday nights we have a chat and they live in Montreal and my one cousin lives in Oakville and my other three are in Montreal so we all get to see each other's faces and the first call we had the first half hour all we did was laugh really hard because my teeth didn't fall out but we laughed so hard because my cousin's we're not really that good with using computers, so we were trying to arrange it. Oh my goodness, I laughed so hard. I couldn't stop laughing. I was laughing so, so hard. But anyways, when I was talking to them last Friday night, I said something about how I really like chip nuts. And they're like, what's a chip nut? And I was like, what? What do you mean, what's a chip nut? You've never tried a chip nut? And they're like, no. And I said, well, chip nuts are these awesome peanuts and they're wrapped in like a chip coating. Kind of like, it's kind of like the chip of um, Pringles potato chip kind of wrapped around a peanut. So um, I went out to the store where I get them and I got my cousins a whole bunch of nuts. So I am going to send each of them a box with some chip nuts in it to Montreal but I will probably put a note in with them. So I will do a letter and it's, you know, like Rabbit was saying to Pig, well, why are you telling your grandmother this? It's just a thank you note. And sure, it's nice to get a card that says, thank you for the whatever you bought me. Love so-and-so. Of course, that's nice. But isn't it also nice to get a letter that says a little bit more that like when I was younger, my mom would say, well, someone sent you money you write a letter and you tell them what you plan on doing with that money so it could be like thank you very much for the money you sent for my birthday I think I'm going to use it to buy a doll because I really like dolls and then if there's room on the paper you might as well tell them some other stuff too because it's always nice to hear from people so maybe um so maybe my cousin Susie she has grandchildren so maybe I'll do a funny letter for one of those kids. So her one great grandson's name is Cooper. So maybe I'll do this to Cooper. And he's in grade one. So he might like puzzles and stuff. So I'm going to write, Dear Cooper, And then you put a little comma there. And then on the next line, you leave, you don't write right to the edge, you indent. That means you move over a little. So I'm going to write my next word starting under the E here. I'm going to say to Cooper, hi. Am I writing this problem? Uh, hi. How are you? Cooper lives in Montreal, so... The weather over there is not always the same as the weather we're having. And Cooper just turned six. So he, I think he'd be an SK. Yeah. So I wrote, dear Cooper, hi, how are? I made a mistake. I forgot to write you. So I'm just going to put an X over this because I shouldn't have put my question mark yet. So now I'm going to write you and then put the question mark. Dear Cooper, hi, how are you? 
Um, I think I'll say I hope you are having fun and I hope you're having fun um at home because he's not in school right now either so then I'm gonna write love from and I'll just say your Brantford cousins because he has lots of cousins in different cities and countries so I'll say love from your Brantford cousins And then I'm going to put XOXO. -X and that means the X means kiss and the O means hug. Kiss, hug, kiss, hug. Um, so I wrote this letter. So what I'm going to do, because he's six, and I know some six-year-old boys, and I know they like tricks and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this card into a puzzle. I'm not going to make it really hard because I do want him to be able to figure out what it says, but I'm going to cut it corner to corner. I'm going to make sure there's writing in each piece because otherwise he's not going to know which one goes with which. Um, yeah, so he's going to get an envelope full of pieces and he's going to be like, who sent me ripped up paper? But then he's going to have to figure it out by putting it all together. So you can do that to add some fun to your letter. One time I got a letter and it had a card inside. And when I opened the card, like I pulled it out of the envelope and the person who sent it had filled it with um, sparkles and confetti and all this, so they went everywhere. Luckily, I opened it when I was in the backyard, but um, so I've always wondered about doing that, but some, some people don't like getting messy houses, so I don't do that. So here is the letter I just wrote. So I can put that in an envelope in the box of chip nuts that I'm gonna send his granny, and then he gets, you know, something that, he gets to play with if he's bored because another thing is um, you can put stickers in an envelope with a stamp you can put um, maybe coloring pages or I had these that I was gonna send someone where did I put them I just had them yesterday oh so these are the Pete the cat things I could put one of those in with some stickers for them to do Pete the cat because um, you know it's a time where a lot of people are home and they get bored they don't know what to do they want to do stuff they don't want to just be on the tablet because that's all they get to do sometimes so you could draw them pictures too like uh, so I have these things these are, it says, I made this, and there's just a line there. I made this blank for you. So Cooper could practice his writing by writing dog in there, D-O-G, and then he could draw a picture of a dog, and then there's lines down here. If he wanted to write about the dog, he could be like, oh, this is a dog we used to have, or this dog's name is whatever, or this dog likes bones, or whatever. So that's just some decorated paper um or you could draw a picture so one of the funny pictures we used to do when we were kids uh we would do i just asked my husband today if he used to do this too and he said yes so what we used to do is we draw a line with a break in it like that and then where that break is 
we'd go like that, make like a big long U, and then we'd count four ovals and put them put them here. One, two, three, four, with the line going through them. And then over here we'd do four ovals. One, two, three, four, like that. And then we'd go like this. And we'd make a guy peeking over the fence. This guy does not have symmetrical eyes, but that's okay. See? And then we'd make this look like a fence by putting pieces, the pieces of wood. like that so now the guy's peeking over the fence and you can put like knots in the wood and put some marks like wood has the grain in it and um and then you could you could give him a hat if you wanted or you could give him some funny hair or you could give them both, I suppose. That actually would make a cute Father's Day card for someone. Because it's a man. So if you have a dad or a grandpa or an uncle or a special man, you could make that form for Father's Day and put it on the outside of the card. Uh, so yeah, that's something you could also do and mail people. So as long as you don't put too much in the envelope, you just need one stamp. If this the envelope is too thick or too heavy. Like when I sent the books or the stuff to my kids last week, a couple of them were too thick. So I, I had to go to the post office with the thick ones and I had to ask them to weigh that because then I had to put a little extra on. So if it's just a regular envelope with a couple of pieces of paper in it, it's fine to just put one stamp on if it's going in Canada. And then if it's going to another country, you then have to put extra postage on it too. So you would maybe go to the post office unless your family knows about it. Like I did Google uh, postal rates and stuff so I could check the weight of them at home. So I knew which ones would need extra stamps. And then uh, those ones were the ones I took to the post office. But uh, yeah, so writing letters is fun. So you could write a letter to a friend that you miss that you're not seeing these days or a postcard a postcard is like you don't need an envelope I do have postcards here but I didn't realize I was going to talk about postcards um, you can also get big envelopes like this or even bigger envelopes if you're sending bigger stuff but um yeah, so a postcard, you don't even put in an envelope. It's like a card you write on the back. You put the address on the back. You put the stamp on the back and stick it in the mailbox. You don't even need an envelope. So maybe while we're off right now and people are feeling bored or, you know, there's going to be rainy days. There's nothing to do outside and you want to, you could draw a picture, write a letter, think of someone might be someone you get to see at Christmas that you haven't seen since Christmas. It might be a friend that you don't get to see now that school's out. As, as long as you can find their address, you can mail them a letter. And so some things like that will need grown-ups to help with. But if you have a grown-up help you, um, it's always nice. And you could even say to your grown-up, hey, do you think of someone, do you know of someone you'd like to send a thank you card to or just a letter to just to pick up their spirits? And I collect little things like this. Like this is a little angel bookmark or little fridge magnet because I always like mailing things to people or a little sheet of stickers. I collect things like that so that when I do write letters, I think, oh, who might like this? I'll just stick that in there just to be a little extra thing in the mail. And uh, it's a nice way to let people know that you're thinking of them. And I have been thinking about you guys because I miss you a lot. I miss being in the classroom and I miss being with kids and doing fun stuff. So thank you for watching my video and I will see you next time. Bye.